Lab 12, Malware Reverse Engineering. In this lab, we are going to practice reverse engineering techniques on malware to find their functionalities and inner logics, such as uh, decompile malware, find a malware inner logic, exploit decompiled code. The following tools will be used here. Uh, now let's uh, download these tools, some tools you are required to uh, install before. For example, this Visual Studio, it will take uh, half to one hour. So if you didn't install Visual Studio in Lab09, please download the community version and install. Follow this video from 2.20 to uh, 11.38. This one takes uh, half to one hour. Download this community version is free. It's a free download. Download and install it. You don't know what to do. How to install it? Follow this video. And now we are going to uh, download these things. Before that, we would like to create a folder to hold all the contents we, uh, we have today. 250, create a folder, create a lab 12. First download the samples, open your tab, click here to download it. This is the right way to download it. Lab 12. Right click any file from the pop up menu to check this one. You have done this one in our last lab. So, here I right click, you see that is this CLC shell. I installed this uh, 7 zip and extract here. Oops. Now you see the samples, they are downloaded from the SAMS class. Reversing a .NET executable. The execute for debug you have downloaded uh, in our last lab, so you can copy from our last lab and paste here. For a few students, they didn't do this uh, last lab, so they can come here from this uh, release and download the zip file. I uh, saved here. Lab 12. Can come to this folder, Lab 12, to extract here. Before that, I would like to uh, have a look. Open folder, and it's okay to extract here. Two subfolders release, plugin SDK and uh, commit hash. They are extracted from this uh, snapshot of exit for debug. Then we download this uh, IL spy. IL spy is an open source.net assembly browser and a decompiler. So we use this one to decompile C sharp executables, .NET executables. And you can see the functionality and the requirement. The features decompilation to C plus a C sharp whole project project decompilation and CS project not a uh, solution. Search for types, methods, properties, and so on. So you can go through this one to have a look to see its uh, features. You also need to install uh, these frameworks. Let's have a look. Uh, go up. After you installed uh, Visual Studio, you should have done the uh, 
registrar.net framework here in this release we download this uh, zip file saved in our laptop now go there here I open it again to have a look now you see uh, there are lots of files so you don't uh, please don't extract here otherwise everything will be messed up good idea is to extract to this folder then everything is held inside this folder yeah, there are lots of files there's a C sharp decompiler then download these strings in our previous labs, we use uh, bin text to find the strings from executable files. Today, we are use command line these strings to find the strings from executable files. So the command name is also called strings. It is used to extract the text from executable files, and you can see how to use it. Just uh, click download and save it in laptop. Again, I would like to unzip it here. It contains only two files a 32 bit string and a six. another one is a 64 bit strings and also a 64 bit A.exe. This is for ASK code, maybe just a guess. So it's okay to extract here. And you can see uh, they you can use it for Unicode or ASK code. And here you can explain that string A. We may have try just to practice those uh, commands to see what the difference. Now download Python 3 and install it. These are all small software. We can install very well quickly. For Visual Studio, it's a huge software, so you need to, uh, you need a half to one hour to complete the installation. Yeah, for this uh, Python, download this uh, Python 3.9.4 and uh, click Save it. Here, see, uh, it's done. This is Python 3. Double click, install it. Here, cust customize installation and uh, choose uh, add Python 3.9 to the path. Then we can run it from anywhere. So that uh, customize installation, we see this stuff. You just uh, click next. Choose all default options. Then go back to a look. We chose this one. Please tick this one. Python 3.9 to pass. And choose the customize installation. Then choose all the default option. Click next. Here choose install for all users. Here's the part we need to modify. Then we click uh, install. Others uh, just leave it there. Okay, now we installed uh, all this uh, program. Also, we need to install the .NET 3.5. This one is used by the uh, samples. So we right click this one. You can see uh, this is a reference. You can follow this uh, reference to complete the installation. Here, I just show you how to do that. Open a command prompt. Right click as administrator then copy this command
right click paste it here and press enter okay it says the operation completed successfully which is enabled then from the server manager install this .NET framework 3.5 here you type a server manager right? server manager go from manage add roles and features you should be very familiar from ITS 1 city file click uh, next to install add roles and features with a role based or feature based installation Choose the local virtual machine. We are going to install features, so just click next. Here you see I installed this uh, .NET framework 3.5 103 installed. So you can check the, the, this one. We need to install this one. So it's installed. And also this one, framework 4.7, you see it's also installed. So mine, my computer is done. I install all of them. I'll click a cancel. If you didn't install it, please install them. Now after that, the prerequisite is satisfied. Now we can start our lab. This uh, Python now is a uh, is completed. Okay, close. To check your Python. In the terminal window, you just type Python to have a look. Right? You see a uh, Python 3.9.4 pop up. It's good. So you type Ctrl Z, press Enter to quit this uh, Python interactive terminal. And we will use it later. So I minimize it here. We have three tasks to reverse engineering the three uh, engineer reverse engineer three samples. Now let's go through these uh, samples. The first samples. The first sample is a challenging one dot exe. Go to our folder. See the samples. Right, challenging one dot exe. So we can right click, copy this uh, location. This command window, type cd, empty space, right click, paste here, type dir. You see these three samples challenge one.exe, mimi cat, battle station.exe, and pma1, serial2.exe. First, play and observe. The sample. You can double click it or run from the command window and double click it to change one. Double click. Right, you see this is uh, C sharp form one. Is written. How do we know it's uh, written in C sharp? We will see. Here there is only one button. And here let's start with something easy. You click decode. The image is changed. And we get some unreadable text. Our task is to, is to find this uh, code. Here you create the code that are not changed, so we want to find the readable text encoded into this one. So close it. Now run this simple, uh, run this sample in x64 debug, 64 bit, and check whether it's stored at its entry point. So, go to our lab 2, the release, x for if we use 32 bit, you will see, in our last lab, we use 32 bit, right? Here, currently we don't know if it's 32 bit or 64 bit. You can have a try with it. If you use 32 bit, to open this sample challenge one dot exe we see nothing. So maybe we think they are it's a sixty four bit. 
So I'll close this one. Now we use this uh, 64-bit X uh, debug. So roll down. Find this uh, X64 debug.exe. And we open it. Open that sample here. Turn it one dot exe. Now you see it's uh, open, and uh, it stopped at the system breakpoint. Now we want to uh, go to the program endpoint. In our last lab, we just uh, click one. It will stop at the program endpoint, right? And you can also see some strings here. But currently it's inside the system. Yeah, yeah. So we click this one. Now you see it uh, didn't stop. It does not stop. And the program pop up right away and here it's running. It's running. So it uh, does not stop. Decode. See this code. So now you see uh, the program written generally in C sharp. We cannot debug the lag like those uh, C program. C++ program. So we will quit this one. Stop debug. Or close it. Then close it. So does it stop at the endpoint? No. It only stop at the system uh, endpoint, not at the program's endpoint. Now open the sample in CFF Explorer. I right click uh, this uh, CFF Explorer. Here the CFF Explorer, we still need this one, but I didn't put it in this uh, prerequisite, so it opens this uh, CFF Explorer. Is this one? We need to download and install it, download this Explorer suite. So save it on inside the lab tab. This one, you see it. It uh, the PE editor has full support for PE thirty two, sixty four bit special fields description and modification. Dot net supported. This is what we need. Okay, now. Go inside lab trail and install this explorer suite. Just all choose the default options. And click done. Now go to the samples, right click, this is challenge one.exe. Here you see uh, open with CFF Explorer. Okay, it's opened. Now you can check the summary of this challenge one.exe. Here it says it's a portable 32 bit .NET assembly. Interesting, right? With the X debug, we need 64 bit. And here it says 32 bit .NET assembly. And you can see uh, the file description and so on. Orange original file name, product name. So it looks like a uh, on Sam's class. Sam changed the program name from this uh, original file name to challenge one dot exe. And you can check the source of this file on Sam's class. It's from a uh, capture the flag challenge. Now you can check the anti headers here. The machine is an Intel 386, is for 32 bit. The file type is 32.net. Here, file type. File type file type is this one, portable, executable, so it took on assembly. So you need to uh, take screenshot about this one to answer this question. File type, machine type, you want to see it, the machine type. 
in this uh, empty headers or file header machine here into uh, 386 the machine type now find the strings of this sample with the strings.exe and save them in a text file can you find uh, flare this word from the text and now we can close this uh, CFF Explorer here you can go through all these sections to have a look about the sample you can see these resources resource entries and so on and go through all this stuff by yourself okay now let's use that string from this uh, command prompt we extract the strings.exe here right? you can see oh, you need to go up to samples you can use dir dot dot string star.exe and you see on the lab trail we have strings.exe strings64.exe strings64a.exe let's just use strings.exe so we type dot dot strings.exe and you'll see how to use it just press enter it will show you how to use it. Search ask and unicode strings in binary image. Right? If you use dash a ask only search. So we want to search all of them. So we don't know use this which just use the simplest uh, way. Or others just use the default. So we use uh, strings followed by our Challenge one dot exe. If you just press enter, you will see all the strings. We want to save those strings. Let's first and have a look about all those strings. Right, these are all those strings. We want to save it. So let's create challenge one dot txt text file. We want to save all the strings to make it more readable string one string strings.txt or challenge one strings.txt ok now everything is saved inside this text file now can you uh, find this flare from the text find the word flare ok open it you see this challenge one strings.txt right click with a uh, with your studio code open with code suddenly you can uh, search with a notepad but the notepad is not as uh, powerful as this one type ctrl f flare no result we didn't find a uh, word called uh, flare or portal or, or string or anything we don't hear flare no flare no fl we have fl but we don't have flare and you see you can go through to have a look about these strings here we didn't see any uh, windows api right? oh, we have windows api here here we see the, some windows api culture info system globalization now you may wonder whether this is windows api or not just a uh, .NET framework class name or namespace name it looks like it's a uh, .NET space name right? system.windows.forms you have learned uh, at S240 in C sharp so you know these things and this is properties form one program resource title picture box so that picture box is used to show those two pictures. There is a dog, right? And system.join. 
and we have uh, other students can check this stuff. Set image looks like a function name or method name. Get choice, get length. Set out focus. And we have some uh, strings inside the resources. Now you see this BTN decode. If you're very f if you're familiar with uh, C sharp GUI programming, this BTN usually is a, the abbreviated name of a button, right? Button decode. So it looks like this uh, function name or that uh, button decode when we run that program. We can uh, compare that one. Here we run it again. You see this decode. So it looks like uh, this uh, BTN decode is a function used to handle this uh, decode button. And then you see this caption decode. Label, title. So this uh, label. Title. Huh? Let's start with something easy. Here you see this one. This is string and form one here, form one. So we've we've we found the strings in this uh, GUI interface. And we can find some other auxiliary information. You can see the encoding is UDF dash eight. Okay, these are the strings we found with the string.exe. Now let's close it. Then we are going to decompile the sample with ILSpy. Decompile this uh, program. Find the decompiled C sharp code for the button decode click method. Find the input data to decode which is in the resource data secret and save this uh, data secret in code. Okay, we go to lab 12, run this uh, IL spy. Yes, scroll down, run this IL spy. .exe, IL spy .exe. Double click. Okay, this is the IL spy. First, uh, load some assemblies. Now we click open to open a sample. Lab 12. We open this uh, sample, change1.exe. Here you see the shop here, change1.exe, and with some sample information. We put it here and click this uh, plus to see the resources, references, metadata. We want to see the resources. Here you see the resources. You change the one data secret in code. And from one by resource. That's a resource, we can save it. Yeah, uh, data secret. And uh, inside this module, Can see any uh, useful information. Check the properties. Here, see forms, form one. Okay, now we have form one. We see a BTN decode click. Right, we found this uh, method. Open it. Now you see the avoid readable. Here in this uh, button, decode click. What is that? Here, first go to that uh, resource data secret to read it out. Then, for each byte in this uh, data secret, it is decoded here with this sentence and saved in a text string. Text, text to, text 
directory and this is label dot text equals text three and this text three is a show up in the on the sample so you see how it uh, went through this encoding process first for each byte do this processing then get a text in this text you also process it to get a text too for text 2 you process again we get a text 3 right? text 3 we also use some uh, processing this bit XOR with some numbers lastly text 3 is show on that uh, label those unreadable stuff so which means we want to find this uh, dead secret to see what it is And here that secret it looks like is also encoded and this part is used to decode that, that secret. So text we will get a readable uh, stream. Certainly you can go through all these steps to see what you get. Now how could we get this resource? This is the first one. Second one, we need to write a simple C sharp program uses in, using this code to decode this data secret. So this is what we are going to do. Here you will click this one. Come some, uh, you will see something like this. Get this data secret resource couch. And we see this data secret is here. We can save it in Bad Republic. And all this thing we can save it. OK, now let's see. Save this data secret encode. Find the input there to decode this, uh, inside this resource. Here it is. Right? We can save this one. Data secret. Let's create uh, the secret one and save it. Now in this folder, lab trail, samples, and check this data secret one. Its size is uh, 1 kilobyte. We can right click check the property. It's only 31 byte. It's only 31 byte. So what's uh, its uh, content? Content. We can use a hex editor. Drag and drop here. You see the content is uh, not readable, so we need to uh, decode this uh, 31 character. How do we decode it? We use the code from this uh, method, button decode. Inside this form 1. That uh, BTN decode click. Use this part. We come to this step. Right? We just save that one. Now exploit the decompiled C sharp code directly. Write a simple C sharp program to decode the file. This one. And compile the C sharp program, decode the File date secret and find the secret. You learn C sharp in uh, 240, so you should be able to read the code. The template is provided. Check the code in our lab. Here, open here. So this is uh, decode.cs. This is a template. You can use this template. Put the secret decoding shop code 
following ISL in this loop. So this uh, program first through this uh, command line parameter we pass a file. How do you use it? A decode secret file in the command line, and this uh, secret file is passed as a arc zero to the program. If it's not exist, you pop up some errors. If it exists, you read it out. Then use the code. We decompiled that sample in IL spy and put it here. Then I print out. So you can uh, click draw. Control A, Control C, copy it. Come to this place. Samples. Right click. New uh, text document. Control A to change everything. Uh, we create a decode. Both CS. Please pay attention. All these extension is shown. All the extensions are shown. You need to click this view menu. Tick this file name extension. Then you will see all the extension. Now I right click open uh, with code, with a stereo code, and Ctrl V, paste the code I just copied from our course companion website. Ctrl S, save it. Now you are asked to get the decompile code, C sharp code from IL Spy. In this IL Spy, This is the one used to decode the data secret and get a text string, readable text string. Can we paste it here? Right, there's a text we want to get it, and here is a B byte in this F byte. This F byte is a read from that file. So now we can control S, save it. So uh, this is the one we need now. How do we compare and run this one? After you installed Visual Studio, here Visual Studio, in your start menu, you should have a folder called Visual Studio. Here you see Visual Studio 2019. Click this one, developer command prompt. And uh, in order to compare this uh, decode.cs, let's go to this uh, folder. Right click, copy it. Oops. CD, right click. There are. Now you see uh, this uh, decode.cs. How do you compare it? We use CSC, the C sharp compiler. Followed by this decode.cs, press enter. Now it's, uh, the completion is done. You dare all again. You see currently we have only one file called decode.cs. After completion, you see a decode.exe is there. Right? Now how do we use it? Decode.exe. It says handle the uh, stuff. Outside index was outside the bound of the array. Because the usage is not like this. In our source code, we need to provide another file, the secret file here. Date secret one. So we run it like this, press enter. Okay, now we get a readable string. This is a string secret in the executable file. Now this is a 
task one reverse engineering this is challenge one dot exe now for this uh, task two is almost identical to task one except the code in this uh, button is not the same it's a little bit different all others are identical you need to find you need to go through all this step as in task one for example play and observe the sample run the sample in exit for dbg then open with this CFF Explorer, find the file type and machine type. Use the strings command to find all the strings. And can you find this uh, .NET from the text? Then you decompare the sample with an error spy. Find the method. Find the input data to decode, which is in the resource data secret. Everything uh, almost identical to the first one except the code save this uh, data secret dot in code so you want to have uh, data secret we call it data secret 1 so when you save this one it is called uh, data secret 2 otherwise you will mess them up then use the template you provided to decode this one to find a secret so I will not uh, repeat this, uh, these steps. I only show you uh, what it uh, looks like. The second one is the PMA 132. Double click. Right. You see, it looks uh, quite similar, uh, identical here. The first screen. Click decode. The image is also identical except this one. This is an unreadable message. So we just go through those steps uh, demonstrated in sample one. Then you should be able to complete this one. For this sample two, when we open with a uh, arrow spy, please pay attention. Here currently we have this uh, change one we open here. When we open this uh, second sample PMA one thirty two, you see it will be put here. So if you didn't pay attention, you may use the code from this challenge one. So please pay attention. Because when you check this uh, PMA one set two, you check the resources, it all looks almost uh, identical. Here you can see the data secret. And also you can see this form one. The button decode click. It looks like almost the same as the previous one, right? But when you compare this sentence and uh, against the challenge one, the button click. Here, when you check it, here is a uh, 0x29 for this uh, challenge 1 and for this uh, challenge 2 here is the first one is uh, 29 here now the second one is here is uh, 41 so it's different and also the dead secret we need to save it as uh, dead secret 2 the secret 1 is there Oh, this one quite a dead secret too. Then you need to uh, create the C sharp source code, or you just use the previous one and uh, copy this one. To I suggest you create a second one. The first one quite a decode one dot CS, second one quite a decode two dot CS, and put that uh, decoding code here. Twenty nine is for the first one. And the second one is 41. So other steps you can all done by yourself. I only want to emphasize, please uh, pay attention. It's very likely you will mess them up if you don't uh, pay attention. 
Now for the last sample. Play and observe. Yeah, this uh, same game ask for two weapon army codes. So we can uh, run it. Have a look. What is the last one? Mimi Cat. Battle Station. Double click. You can see what it looks like. Stage 1. Marauding, Tabby, Frigate. So, weapon army code. You type a code and click file. You type a code 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Just a guess to help a play. Click file. File. It says invalid weapon. So, it has two stages. So, let's uh, close it. Here you play and observe it. Run this uh, sample. Run it by yourself. Does it uh, stop at the end point? You will see it will not. And open the sample in CFF Explorer to check the file type and machine code. We will also find a similar result as the first two samples. Find the strings of the sample, do it by yourself, and uh, check whether you can find this uh, kidder from the text. Actually, this kidder is a part of the weapon army code, but you will not f be able to you will not be able to find it. And they compare the sample with the uh, IL spy and uh, pay attention to two functions or methods. First one fire button click. Second one is valid weapon code. And actually through this uh, decompilation we will be able to find the first weapon army code. So now, now let's have a look. Decompile it with this IL spy. So to minimize uh, the first two samples. Now we open the last sample. Mimi Cat Battle Station. Here is a Mimi Cat Battle Station. And you can also see the resources. And the form. There is a local form, program stage 1 form, stage 2 form. So since it says it has two stages, so let's check this stage one and stage two forms. Inside the stage one form, we have uh, you see this fire button click. What is a fire button click? When you go through here, it says the code type for text is rainbow. Then it goes through this uh, stuff. Victory animation timer dot start. So it looks like a, this rainbow is the arm code for the first stage. For the second stage, you can go through these uh, functions to have a look. For example, the file button click, it is stage 2. Now, on this stage 2 code. Is for um, text box, and uh, we didn't see any com how to compare this one. Right? When you check this stuff, here there is a is valid weapon code. It looks like uh, the valid code is inside here. We need to find it. So for that first one, stage one, this stage two form, stage one form is here. Stage one form, fire button click. So this is a rainbow. Let's uh, try this rainbow. So we run this uh, sample three. 
and I type rainbow here and I click fire okay it looks like a rainbow is uh, correct weapon arming code for stage one now for stage two we can try bullet click fire it says invalid weapon code so we still need to find the valid we weapon code for stage two and it's invalid we weapon code here we have a function in stage two form actually to find all the logic you are suggest to go through all those uh, methods and all the components especially for those students who are familiar with the C-sharp programming since you are all from uh, at age 250 you are now a C-sharp programming so I suggest you go through all those uh, components and the methods to find the logic of this program here you are you are suggested to uh, find the what is the army weapon code is from this uh, function here for those uh, code it uh, we have a string to check the valid or not we have a string that holds those code and that code will be XOR with the character A and save them uh, this array will convert the string into a character array in this character array every character x or with uppercase letter a and save it and here to return this one Array dot sequence equal here. It asks whether this array equals the character inside this place. So if equal, then we get a true, right? Is valid. We get a true equal, and if it does not equal, we get a false. So to decode the weapon, uh, what is the weapon code? Here you know this one is. Is after every character inside that weapon code X or with this uppercase A, then we get this one if it's valid. So reversely, we need to take decode this one. And uh, for this uh, X or, it has a property. If X or with this uh, A twice, you will get the original message, and you will then more details in LS uh, 350 or you may check online resource to find the property of the XOR operation so here the solution is we use these uh, characters to XOR with A again we will get the original character in this uh, valid weapon code so we can write a uh, Python, short Python program to decode this weapon code. Here a template is provided to you. In our lab to have code. There is a kitty.py. This one is uh, created for you. So here we got those uh, code from IL Spy and put it here and we call it self text. I just copy this array and paste it here. Paste it into this array, self array, we call it self array. Then use a function to decrypt the ciphertext or secret text. 
then we can get the original text. Here you see we just uh, do XOR with uh, this uh, uppercase letter A, do XOR again. You will learn cryptography systematically in IDS uh, 350. So here you just uh, copy this one and run it to get the code. Draw control A, control C, go to the sample folder, we create a file, text document, and uh, change the name to uh, let's say kitty.py. Right click open uh, register code. Control V paste the Python code here. Control S save it. So it will print out the web code. So now let's run it. You run it in this uh, command prompt. So there are you see the kitty.py. So how to run it? Type Python kitty.py. Press enter. Okay, you see this uh, weapon code is called uh, Bago Cannon. Right click, copy it. Now we can play this game. The first uh, weapon on the code Rainbow. Click Fire. The second uh, we weapon on the code is a background cannon. Right? I just paste here because I copied background cannon. Fire. Okay, it looks uh, right. Victory. And you get this uh, flag. So you need to uh, take a screenshot about your output here. Okay. That's it, this is uh, sample 3. Okay, we completed all the tasks. Yeah, task 1, 2, 3, now on. Uh, please follow these steps and uh, provide explanation and a screenshot. Now the last uh, question, review question. The final grade of this course is the weighted sum of the following assessments. You see the major component is uh, all the labs. We have 12 labs. Quizzes, just 10%. The two exams, totally 30%. Each is 15%. So based on this, uh, this policy, this uh, grading policy, answer these questions. Question one, there are eight quizzes and they are assigned scores are here. If I forgot doing quiz four, oops, the, the largest one, how many points will be lost from my final grade? So all the quizzes contribute 10 points to my final grade, right? So we only need to find the, the portion of this uh, quiz four. How do we find it? We first we find the summation, then use uh, 59 divide by that summation, get the ratio, then times 10. That's uh, quiz 4. How many points quiz 4 contribute to my final grade? We can do it uh, quickly here. I copy it and paste uh, in uh, Python. Uh, use any uh, terminal window is fine. Dot Python here. Now let's uh, quizzes. Paste here. Change the forward slash to comma.
you can use the calculator for any uh, online tools you want. Here I just use uh, Python. Now you can use some from quizzes. Find summation. Quiz 4 is 59 divided by the summation of all these quizzes. Then you times 10. So uh, we are lose 1.88 from uh, the final grade if I forgot to increase 4. Question 2. Each lab is assigned 100 points and there are 12 labs. So each lab is equivalent. If I forgot to submit two labs, how many points will be lost from my final grade? So totally all the labs contribute 60 points for the final grade, right? No, 12 labs. So each lab contribute 60 divided by 12 is 5, 5 points for the final uh, grade. I missed 2. So 2 times 5 is 10. So I will lose 10 points from my final grade. At the most, I can only get 90%, but it's uh, really hard to get everything else right. If I missed uh, 6 laps, can I pass this course? The pass, co uh, the pass score is uh, 70%. Now, if I missed 6 lab, each lab is 5 points. 5 times 6 is 30. Then 100 minus 30 is 30. Oh, is 70. Right? 100 minus 30 is 70. So 70? Yes, I can pass this course. But it's uh, very unlikely because it's really challenging for me to get 100% right for, our, for all other components. Question 3. If I forgot doing all quizzes, can I get an A in this course? Here, all quizzes is 10%. If they are all lost, then I still have 90%. So yes, it's theoretically, I can get an A in this course, but it's very unlikely because it's very challenging for me to get 100% right for all other components. Question 4. If I forgot, uh, if I got 70% in both exams, and how many points will be lost from my final grade? And can I get an A in this course? Here, each exam is 15%. If I got 70%, uh, which means I lost 30% in each exam, right? Now, 30% times 15 is uh, 4.5 points. So I will lost 4.5 points for each uh, exam. Totally, 4.5 plus 4.5, 9. I will lost 9 points from my final grade. So theoretically, I still have 91 points left. Can I get an A? Yes. But it's uh, again very really challenging for me to get everything right to get the other uh, 91 points. So how could you get a good grade? Try your best to make everything, uh, every component above uh, 90%, then you will be absolutely get an A in this course. So this is the final lab. Good luck to your final exam and wish you a successful semester. See you next semester. Bye-bye.